So we have the M&M's directed investigation and we said uh, early on it was due on the 4th of April. Uh, clearly that's not achievable, it's the 8th of April. Um, you need to be starting your M&M's project from the second half of tomorrow's double. We don't have a double tomorrow. You need to be starting it well and truly by Thursday. So if your class learning is such that it is so behind that you need to work through uh, today's lesson, tonight's homework, tomorrow's lesson and tomorrow night's homework just to finish class learning, then you must do that. Okay, so class learning's a priority because without the knowledge of the class learning, this becomes quite difficult. You also will be relying, and uh, for green group, you'll be relying and bludging on your partner who may have done all the class learning. So when it comes to providing evidence of what you did, there'll be very little because you haven't done the class learning to actually understand what's required. So if I go around the classroom and I ask different people what is required, I should get a reasonable response. Uh, we have had a look at this before. We have had a discussion about this before. Okay. I'll give you a brief minute to cast your eye over what is required one more time and then I'll ask you very shortly around what it might be for the rest of the class to understand. So judging by the uh, volume, I would suggest that you all understand what's going on. So I'll be picking you at random. Make sure you know what's going on. All right. Um, so Ashley, what's one of the things that's required in this uh, directed investigation, do you consider? What's one thing that you would understand as being required with, to achieve this? Um, to show you working out. Uh, yeah, one thing would be to show you working out, absolutely. Show all calculations will be very important. And if you're working with someone, you show the calculations as well as your partner. Right, so it's not just, oh, this is, here's one copy of our achievement, okay? You do it as well as your partner if you're in green. Blue, of course, you're doing it individually. So blue, you're doing it individually. Um, green, you can do it individually or as a pair. It's up to you, okay? Uh, now... Talk to me about what we're trying to solve here, Harry. What's something we're trying to solve here with this directed investigation? Uh, yeah, yeah, a new container, a new packet, new container for M&Ms. A new container for M&Ms. And what are some of the shapes that we may consider, Taylor, that may be able to provide us with a new container for M&Ms. What are some of the shapes? Yeah, so what are they called? Starts with a P. Yeah, cool, prisms. So it could be a prism. What else might it be, Taylor? Could be pyramids. Or it could be cylinders. Now, Ryan, can you explain to me, please, what the difference is between a prism and a pyramid? Prisms, or pyramids like triangles. Good start. Excellent start. There's something in that for us to um, understand. Think about it because you might be asked next, okay? Connor, what's the difference, given what Ryan started us with, what's the difference between a pyramid and a prism? Yes. If you do the same with the pyramid, you don't. Yeah, good, good continuation. Good. If you cut a prism through the middle, you're going to get a copy of its face. But if you cut a pyramid through its middle, you probably won't. Uh, can we have further explanation? Georgie. Pyramids have a shape of a bottom half of a square or a triangle, and then they meet at a point at the top of the shape. At the point of the base, at, yeah. the, to at the top of the base, absolutely. So a pyramid has uh, maybe a rectangular base and uh, maybe a triangular base, but ultimately they meet at a point above the centre of the base. Okay? 
You can see that, that the point is centred above the base, okay? Whereas a prism, a prism has the same shape at both ends of it. And as Ryan said, if we were to slice it through the middle, we'd still have the same uh, face. Uh, sorry, Connor said that. We'd still have the same face. And as Ryan said, it's sort of triangular. So you, we, we put all our information together, we got there. So they're the sort of shapes that you're working with. And of course, a cylinder has a sphere at its end uh, and looks a little bit like that. So one thing is we're trying to make a new container for M&Ms. We're trying to go from a prism, a pyramid, and a cylinder. Blue group, you must do two of them as a prototype. A prototype would be made out of a piece of paper. All right, a prototype not necessarily is the actual dimensions of your finished product. Okay? So we're going to make a prototype. And a prototype is going to be made out of paper. It doesn't have the dimensions of your good copy. Whoa. Dimensions of your good copy. And likewise, it's not, uh, what would we call it? It's not, um, you know, it's not your final copy. It's basically a rough copy of what it might look like. And once you see that, you're going to say, I reckon that one looks better. It's got to fit in your pocket better, those sorts of considerations that you've got. So with the prototype, blue, you're doing at least two of your prism, pyramid or cylinder. Uh, green, you're doing all three. There's two of you to do the work, so you should be able to. So we're going to do a prototype. If you're misunderstanding what prototype means, you can come and ask me. But what else could you do, Jake, if you didn't know what a prototype was? Ask you. Yeah, uh, yeah, apart from ask me, what else could you do? Ask a friend. You could ask a friend, yep. Yeah. What else could you do, Woody? Yeah, my point exactly. This is a problem and an ongoing problem, you two. Luke, what else could you do? Google it. You could Google it. You could Google prototype, and I'm sure there'd be plenty of explanations around what a prototype might be. Basically, it's a rough copy. Okay. So we're finding a new container, we're creating a prototype. What other things are we going to need to know? What's something else? Plus, minus, and Yes, very good. For our prototype, you're going to need to do a PMI for each shape. You're going to need to do a PMI for each shape. You're going to need to do a positive or a plus of each shape. What are the good things about them? What are the minuses of each of the shapes? And what is an interesting thing of each shape? Okay. Plus a minus and an interesting assessment for each shape. Very good and interesting. Now that needs to be for each shape. Okay. And you need to do a bit of a deep thought, deep analysis about that. What angle do you come from when you're creating those plus minuses? And interesting, what angle are you coming from, Jess? What, uh, who, what considerations are you thinking about? Sorry. Yeah, Beth? Yeah, cool. The manufacturer, uh, sorry, the uh, shop, the shop that's selling them. Good. I let uh, let through another one there. The manufacturer, the people that are producing it. What else, Jake? Um, yep. So who's that thinking about? Size. Who is that thinking about? It's thinking about the customer. Yes, that's right. So you've got to think about from all those angles. All right, Jess? Think about it from all those angles. The shop that's selling them, the manufacturer, the customer. Any, anyone else, Jack? Any other angle you want to come from with thinking about that? Lee? The company? Yeah, the company.
They're a bit hand in glove, but they're also a bit different. Okay? So the company. Good. Well, are we doing final copy like what like material for a new company? Yep, so we're gonna to get to that next. Alright. So you've done the prototypes, you've done it for all three if you're green, you've done it for two of them if blue, okay. Then you've done a plus minus and interesting analysis for each of those three based on your thoughts of what a shopkeeper would want, a manufacturer would want, a company would want, and a customer would want. Are there any questions with that so far? Okay. Silence is deadly. All right. After this, so we've got our prototype and we come to a decision. All right, we make a decision about a certain type, all right? It might be that you take a triangular-based pyramid. That might be your choice. Okay. Bearing in mind what we're learning in class, what are some useful things from class? Bear in mind, Harry, if you're sitting there talking and laughing and not paying attention, it's a fair chance you're going to get asked the next question. All right? So it's probably better off at least concentrating to the best of your ability. Um, Triangular-based pyramid is what you come to. Uh, what, how would we go about it now? What would we do now? So this is going to be a good copy. What are some things we might need to consider? Or from our class when Connor? Uh, advertising and Yep. Very. Yep. Uh, there's certainly the artistic, um, uh, what would we call that? Artistic sort of display. Uh, design. Good. Thank you. The artistic design will be important for your good copy. All right. And you do that electronically. You don't cut out bits off the plat wrapper that I give you and stick it on and say, yeah, there we go. That's done. Okay, all right. Jack. Um, um, oh, the volume. Yeah, like yeah. What about the volume? Shane? Awesome. You've got to work out the volume of one M&M. &M. Now, I'll give you a hint that the shape that you are looking for is an ellipsoid. Okay, and if you Google search what's the volume formula of an ellipsoid, it'll give you a volume formula for it that you've never used before. It's up here, that's right, it looks a little bit like that over here on the whiteboard. And you may need some help with it, but what I've found with the other group is most of them just ran with it. They understood with the diagrams what to do there. Okay. So you work out the volume of one M&M. &M. Okay. When given your packets tomorrow, the first thing each and every one of you is going to do is you're going to count up how many M&Ms are in each packet. Because you might find this 51, you might find this 53, you might find this 49, you might find this 54, and we've got to average them out. Okay? So the second thing to do will be to find the average number of M&Ms per packet. How do we find the average? How do we find the average, Ryan? The average, you have to like get all of them and then you have to just divide it by how many there is. Uh, add them all together first. Oh, add them all together yep. and divide them. Absolutely. So to find the average, uh, add all together. And divide by how many there are. Okay, so for example, today, can you show that screen, please, Alex? Thank you, that helps with your concentration. And um, we might divide it by 21 or 20, however many there are today. All right, so you divide by. That will give you 